Hello everyone and welcome to CFC Fan TV. This is our Sophie. Now, as you all know, this, this video is normally on Patreon, uh, so we're going to do two parts. So part one will be here and part two will be on our Patreon, so you want to see the rest of the questions answered, please go ahead. Uh, but I just thought we haven't done one on here in a while, so um, I asked you all to tweet in your questions and you've given me some very good ones. Now, in light of today's news of Mourinho being sacked, of course there are a few around there, so anything that I haven't covered in our Mourinho video, uh, I will do so here. So... Let's get going then. Um, Joel N. Hi, Joel. Says, uh, your, vid your views on Mourinho being sacked, ironically, three years ago yesterday, and we got rid of him too. Um, listen, like I said in the video, I think that just in this area of the Premier League, teams just don't mess about. And unfortunately, being sixth place and having your worst run to a season since 1991 is unfortunately just not good enough um, I think he made a lot of enemies with the players and the board and you know player power is another, is another a talk for another day and it's not something that I entirely agree with uh, but I think maybe sometimes Mourinho takes it a little bit too far and, and that's why he's in the situation he's in now um, but I don't tend I don't want to really comment on it too much because I, I, I do like Mourinho so everyone that hates me I'm so sorry but um, you know that is just they're just my thoughts there okay uh, next question um, Chanel Wells hi Chanel says uh, we need a striker in January. If you were in charge, who would you go after? It's really difficult, you know, because we've talked about so many players over the years, me and Charlie, and I'll get him to do some transfer vids in January because obviously that's when it'll all be going on. Um, but, you know, we talk about signing all sorts of players, Lewandowski and blah, 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 and it never really happens. So for me, there's not really a realistic option at the moment. And I think if the club are looking to sign a striker, a long-term striker, they're going to have to probably put their hands in their pockets and... I'm not sure whether, whether we're, pre we're prepared to do that in January. Um, so, yeah, if I'm being honest, I just have no clue at the moment. And that's something that um, I'll talk to Charlie about. And uh, we'll try and do a video on possible strikers. Next question. Uh, Chris Wynn says, are you applying for the Man United vacant manager's position? Very good question. Do you know what? I think I'd be a great manager. I think I'd be a great Premier League manager, but I just don't think I could do it to Chelsea and be Man United manager. So, unfortunately, I know they're going to offer me the job, but I'm going to have to going to have to turn it down. Uh, <laughs> who's who's next? Uh, Danny Green. Who's going to be the next Man United manager? Um, you know, the last I heard, there was talks of Zidane, possibly, or whoever else. But you know, I, I have no. It, they haven't really. Really, they're going to have a caretaker managers up caretaker manager aren't they for the foreseeable future um, and go from there I expect the team itself will start to perform better um, now that Mourinho's gone there'll be a lot of happy happy players there um, they clearly weren't playing for him uh, the big the big names anyway uh, so yeah so it'd be interesting to see but again I think come January maybe we'll have a little bit more a little bit more news on that once the Christmas period's over um Perry, did you get your YouTube channel started? I haven't yet. I am working on it. The thing is with these YouTube channels is they take up so much time. And, you know, me and Rory and Charlie, we all have full-time jobs. You know, Rory's, Rory has a family and uh, I've, I've got about five jobs. So I'm really trying to juggle everything. So when as soon as I can get it together and put out some good quality content, then I will do so. I don't want to start it and then uh, not be able to put out the best the best videos. So as soon as I think I'm ready to do that, 100% it will be happening. Um, but do comment below and let me know what you guys would like to see because that will be really interesting. Um, next question, uh, who would you start up front tomorrow? Okay, I'll give you a little hint. I think we're going with Giroud. So um, if I still stick to my guns, he's going to be in the team. Um, but yeah, uh, our team sheet will be up tomorrow and you, you guys can, can uh, have a look at that and uh, see if you agree with me. So, um, you know, this is important. It is, I think the Premier League is a little bit out of our reach. So if we could get a, a win, uh, if we could get um, this trophy and, we, we, you know, sorry, we could get a bit of silverware, that would be fantastic. Um, next question then is from Mason Driscoll. Hi, Mason. He says, has, has, has hudson Adoy a future at Chelsea? I think he definitely does have a future at Chelsea. He's very young. Um, he has been, uh, to me, a, a very solid player when we've seen him this season. So, and especially in pre-season, I remember I was in Vegas watching the watching the games, and you know, at times he was the best player on the pitch. I think, if I could say so myself. So, um, I definitely think he's got a future. But I think, like Loftus Cheek, he's just going to have to work his way in. And it's not something if you really, really want to stay at Chelsea Football Club. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, and you're going to have to really, really prove yourself. Um, and understand that you know we're just a club that don't normally let 
our academy players break through straight into the first team. Um, you know, United have always been very good at bringing their youth through and other teams, but Chelsea isn't one of them. So I think Loftus Cheek even getting more game time now is um, will be a huge confidence boost for him in the fact that it could possibly happen. Um, uh, and so, Joel, the last question then. Actually, no, we'll do a couple more questions. So, Joel says, your story behind supporting Chelsea FC. Lovely question there. I love that one. Um, so, my dad, I remember I grew up in Devon, and my dad, I remember when I was probably about four or five, used to take these trips to London, and he'd be gone for a day or two, and he'd go watch the football, and it was always his childhood club. And I think, because he's from Australia, when he came over, he's always supported them from birth. So... I think his brother was Tottenham, which was a little bit, and they don't really speak, I don't think. <laughs> wonder why. Um, but yeah, so he used to go up, and then I think when I was old enough, he took me to my first game, which I think was Chelsea Portsmouth back in the day. Um, and I loved it. I sat in the shed lower, uh, right behind the goal, right behind the net, and that was, that was amazing. Um, and to see us win was, was fantastic. And ever since then, I just kept going to more games, and I think... Probably when we drew 4-4 against the former Champions League, that was one of my most wild games. And that was when I started coming up more and more. And then after that, I moved to London. And I thought, right, I'll get myself a job next to the Chelsea ground because then maybe hopefully I can go to the games more. And the deal with my boss that I worked in the bar across was that if I worked the the 14-hour shift the day to through to the evening, that he would let me have um, the game the game time off and that he would let me go across and then I'd come back and work. So... That was that was the lovely. So I, I never missed a game, and I had my season ticket for quite a few seasons. And um, yeah, that's how it all started, really. Then my dad took me on some European trips, and we met the likes of Dan and others, and um, we've all been friends since. So it's actually quite a nice story, really. But yeah, I think it's all from birth or from your dad. Most people I speak to, it's who their dad supports, um, and it just carries on like that. Right, last question then. Uh, let's find a good one. Uh, <laughs> Okay, anonymous Q. I wonder why you're anonymous for this question. Do you want Jose back? Come on, babe. <laughs> what on earth? My cameraman's laughing. Do you want him back, Sammy? No. no. I think I think the time is. Listen, I think Mar- what Mourinho did for Chelsea Football Club, I think, is is very. Um, it's not credited enough. Uh, it's it's not rewarded enough. You know, he gave us Premier League titles. He was. For me, he was a fantastic manager. I think if he'd never left the first time, things might have been a bit different. Uh, but he did leave, and we've moved on as a club, and we have a different style of play now. You know, we're, this season we're playing very attacking, a very attacking style of football. Mourinho comes back, that's not going to happen. I don't think his style of play is, is right for us anymore. Anyway, I think we needed to change for a few years, and I think Sarri's the first manager that's come in and done that. So I think I'm happy with Sarri for the moment, and um, if that decides to not work out, we'll talk about it then. But I think... Mourinho's story with Chelsea is, is over and I think it was when he left, left the club for a second time. Equally, I don't think he'd come back for a third time. I don't think he'd, he'd do that to himself. So, yeah. OK, next question. Charo says, would you take any Arsenal player in your team? Hashtag ask Sophie. Very, very good question. Um, listen, we need a striker at the moment. So <laughs> anyone who's willing to score goals, I think the obvious choice would be Aubameyang. I'm not sure about Lacazette. I know Troops is, is a massive a massive fan, but I'd probably say Aubameyang just because, you know, we need goals. And um, if you're going to go with the obvious choice, that would be him. But in terms of how likely it is to happen, I would say, unfortunately, it's, the chances are a little bit slim. So, um, yeah, I don't want to get too carried away with that. Um, Kitwit beat the attack. I don't know what even that means. I apologise apologize if it's rude. Uh, he says, do you want to be my friend? Well, I want to be everyone's friend. So, you know, we're all Twitter friends here. And, um, yeah, as long as no one turns up outside my house, I'm happy to be friends with everyone. Um, okay, next question. TCD says, uh, at the Chelsea Daily, hi, the Chelsea Daily, says, where do you want to go on a date? Is that an offer or... Okay, we'll take this as where's, where's my ideal date. We'll go, we'll go with that way. My ideal date would probably be... Um, well, I mean, I'm Greek, aren't I? I'm Cypriot Greek, so if I could go on a date, it would be to a Greek restaurant. Um, I'm not really a big drinker when I'm out for, when I'm going out on meals, so a couple of Greek shots, maybe. They're like these little clear. I don't even know what it is actually. They taste very. It's not like it's not like ouzo or anything like that. They just taste a little bit strange, but they're very nice. So a couple of Greek shots, maybe a nice Greek salad. We went there for my birthday, didn't we, Sammy, with the boys? That was really nice. So that'd probably be my ideal date, and then. Um, Probably I go home, he goes home, you know, if we're talking about a first date, and um, we meet up for, for another dinner date at some point. But, yeah, that'll be my ideal date. I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. I don't really go on too many dates these days. Uh, maybe I should start. Uh, but, yeah. 
anyway guys that was part one of uh, our sophie part two will be on our patreon so please head over to there the link is in the description below and yeah uh, comment below uh, i'm going to do the ask sophie on the community tab next week so uh please 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 check out that to have a look and um yeah see you soon